story five. Reader. If I am reading, I am living. It matters not what the words say. The words respond to me without the presence of my faults. Free from the stain of the mindless needs, a fortunate friend found. Books follow me wherever I go. Friendship without limits. I think of Verne from 1986, where my feelings took me low and towards self-death. Leagues of sea have me to the place I wanted to see. Since then, my books have pleasured me more than meets and words in the I make my own way with words, and they honestly love to be written. Likewise, it's wonderful to talk to you as well. Thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. Gary here, welcome to a book mob episode 45. <clears throat> My Bell's palsy seems to have passed, which is just excellent news for me. Now, today I'm going to be talking about the uh, writer TJ Newman, who has written three books um, in the last uh, three years. And um, her first book was Falling, that was released in 2021. Her second book, a follow up on the same genre. Airplane Disasters, was Drowning in 2023, and finally her newest book, Worst Case Scenario, which was released uh, this past August, and all three books, you may have noticed, have very similar cover designs. Now, sometimes you say don't judge a book by cover, but I think in this case you can. How did T.J. Newman uh, produce and publish and sell uh, three books in three, three, three years uh, about a subject that has been on publisher's desk since the uh, advent of flying. Um, I, think it's, I think it's great that uh, TJ Newman managed to smash through um, in getting her, her, her books published. Uh, her first book, Falling, uh, was a great, was, I mean, had great difficulty in being published. Uh, she took it to, you know, 30 plus uh, publishers who just said, nah, that, that genre doesn't exist anymore. No one wants to read about plane crashes. No one wants. To. And I, in a sense, when you look at the, when you look at the history of, of publishing about, of, of plane smashing and crashing and terrorists and hijacking, uh, you can get the sense that there's a formula follow and people are bored. However, I do think that um, TJ Newman found someone, she found an um, a agent who understood that what she wrote was one, highly entertaining, easy to read, uh, a fun read, and a book that doesn't require uh, too much uh, of your of your time. Now, and that is not a that, and that is definitely not a slur at all. In fact, I'm saying that uh, these three books, which I have read obviously, and all of them, highly entertaining. I mean, really page turners. Books that you can, um, got you know, if I say take on a plane and read on a, on a uh, five-hour, six-hour journey, you should be able to get through most of it, and it will keep you engaged. All her books are set around characters who are then forced into a situation. The plane uh, or the, uh, the the crash, as in the second one, where it crash uh, into the third one, where it crashes into a power plant. Basically, the antagonist is the effects. Of the crash. Now, within now within each group um, of, uh, of of characters, there in one and two and three, everyone has an idea about how to uh, get saved, be saved, get rescued, get out of the situation that they're in. Now, if you remember a few years ago, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, the book The Martian by Andy Weir. Now, if you look at if you look at the, how The Martian is written. You know, yes, it's, again, it's not a, an original story. Um, they've had stranded astronauts um, on, um, on Mars in the past. But again, it's how uh, Andy Weir, at that point in time, managed to touch on a cultural thing, a cultural aspect that for some reason needed to be uh, revisited. And the same with T.J. Newman. She writes from what she knows because she used to be an airline attendant, um, she was also a bookseller, by the way. But the fact that she has all this inside info on how um, uh, airline attendants 
um, go about their job, not just not just in regular flights, but also flights that ha- you know have trouble and how they have to behave. Like if you're on a plane and and the plane starts shaking, and um, you, I always you always look to the airline stewards or, or airline attendants to see the the reactions on their face. Now I understand, no matter what's going on, they're going to keep smiling. So that's no indicator of how bad or how good things are. Now in each book. Um, the plane is uh, a character that um, takes on the role as killer because um, what they need is people to get to come together as a group. There's an out group, there's an in group, and these people then struggle amongst themselves and they go through like a, a procedural disaster plan. Like they'll come up with an idea um, uh, like, oh, okay, we, if we do A, uh, we can get to B. So to me, it's like the book is written on the premise of you know, one problem step forward solved, two problems fouled, fouled, and they move forward only to be moved back. Like if in the, um, oh, in the drowning one, if it's not, if it's not bad enough that um, they have, uh, they're running out of oxygen uh, and they're trapped under, and the water's rising in the cabin, the plane tilts and it makes the situation worse. So what I'm saying is it's a, it's a frustrating and um, uh, it's sort of, you know, when you read it, you, you kind of in your head, you're going, you're trying to come up with the end. How are they going to, how are they actually going to get out of this situation? So your imaginative mind is working as you read through them and you begin to fall in love with characters. Uh, they're characters that you don't like. And the one thing TJ Newman does is she knocks off characters regardless of age or, or likability, which is which I think is a good thing, is that heroes die too sometimes. And um, <clears throat> I think that she's managed to um, get uh, the airline disaster genre up and running. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's a, a plethora of, of, say, I wouldn't say second grade, but, you know, maybe B grade books coming out uh, around airline disasters because publishers sniff, ah, oh, the change in the wind, and if you look at her third book, Worst Case Scenario, now what's happened here is in the first two books, the plane is the main character. What she does here is gets rid of the character, the plane, uh, in the first couple of pages because the plane crashes and kills everyone on board, obviously, because it slams into the ground and explodes next to a uh, nuclear power plant. So then the story is, so for the third book, she has, uh, T.J. Newman has, has probably gone, well, I can't keep, keep me, I, and where can I go? Crashing a mountain, mm, you know, survivor, uh, people eat people. No, I'm going to make this more of a domestic, uh, uh, domestic entertainment nightmare. So when the plane crashes into the uh, power plant, that sets up, opens up a whole wide world of other characters, you know, firemen, uh, politicians, um, rescue workers. So she just basically uh, lifted her airline story to a regular um, disaster story on the ground. So I don't know if, I'm not saying that she won't, but I, I'm, I'd be curious to find out uh, how um, TJ Newman is going to come across with her, with her if she indeed does a fourth um, worse, uh, sorry, uh, airline disaster book. Now, as I was saying before, when Andy Newman, uh, sorry, Andy Weir uh, made his um, uh, first book, The Martian, I think he, f- he followed it up with another book. I can't remember the title, but I did read it, but I wasn't as gr- gripped by the second book as I was by the first. And uh, T.J. Newman, like um, Andy Weir's book, has, I think the first two books, or maybe the first and third, have, have been or going to be made into movies. Again, you can see the, the correlation between the writer, the publisher, the book being printed, book being a bestseller, and then onto the cinema. And I, I always, uh, you know, I'm, all, I'm a big fan of, of reading, and sometimes I don't want books turned into films because it um, sucks so much spirit out of, uh, of the book in order to make a, a, a visual spectacle. Obviously, with um, plain... Uh, crash uh, genre, you can see how it's probably easier to um, get the audience's attention and maybe bypass thousands, hundreds of thousands of possible readers because the films come out. Um, obviously, I, I probably will go see the films, but, I, but I've read the books, so I can 
uh, always say to myself, well, I have sat down, given up time, hours in order to enjoy her books. Um, I also find that um, T.J. Newman has basically, she's not a um, J.K. Rowling um, uh, uh, mammoth sort of uh, behemoth of publishing, but to think that three books published in three years, all basically hits, you've got to wonder how uh, marketing and how... um, other struggling writers who have been writing for 20 years and um, never get offers. So it is it is cutthroat business, I assume. TJ Newman came along and even after, I mean, she obviously she had to jump through 30 or 40 publishers saying, bugger off, we're not going to release that. But she always, you know, she found the one, and I guess that's the thing. The writer finds an agent, the agent finds a publisher, and the publisher finds the audience, which is us. And um, so it's been uh, something that I've always thought about is how books suddenly of a particular genre uh, suddenly just pop out of nowhere, make a deep impact in the culture and then go away as quickly as, as they came. And I'm not sure if that's a good or a bad thing, because obviously, what is the next thing to come? I mean, maybe writers spend a lot of time re- researching, you know, what sold 30 years ago. Maybe this is the time that um, books of a certain genre will suddenly blow up. And um, so I read um, uh, T.J. Newman's three books, Falling, Drowning, and Worst Case Scenario, with the eye of being entertained. Um, It's not literature, but it's great storytelling. The characters are easy, and uh, the dialogue is very smooth and understandable and realistic in the situation that she has come up with out of her mind. And um, each um, delaying tactic towards the end, because there's one goal at the end in all three books, and and that is uh, who survives, who dies, uh, and how they get out of it. So, you know, who, who which are the characters while you're reading, which of the characters aren't going to make it to the end? And occasionally a good thing that uh, Newman does is she wipes out a character and you go, oh, okay. And um, I think that's also a good way to keep um, the reader's engagement at a high level. And again, when you, if you know someone, okay, just say you know someone in your life and you go, I want to, I want to um, get a book for someone's birthday, but then who's going to read it? Ah, I know TJ Newman has written three books in the last three years that I guarantee will bring uh, pleasure and entertainment to the person you're thinking of, including yourself, because reading is for pleasure uh, at, at this level that I'm talking about. I'm always looking at books mostly, not all the time, but mostly I read for entertainment, for an escapism, uh, to engage my creative of my uh, creative side of my brain and to learn things. But ultimately, when you're reading a book that's like um, bubblegum, it tastes so good in the beginning. And obviously, when the sugar goes away, it doesn't, you throw it out. And again, that is not, a, that is not an insult to T.J. Newman at all, because these books are brilliantly uh, put together. They have everything that uh, I guess, drives the human experience. You have action heroes, you have antagonistic heroes, um, you have drama, you have technical problems that the writer has obviously thought about. How do I get out of this situation? Step by step, this, you know, this procedural idea of fix one thing, two things break. Fix one of those two things, this changes. So there's this arc of, of, of storytelling that's heading towards the end where you go as the story reader. Ah, that was satisfying. That was fun. And um, I wouldn't say that I would uh, read these books twice. Maybe in 10 years, you might, I might go back to it and go, oh, yeah, I remember that. That was a good, that was a good reading experience. But ultimately, I think T.J. Newman's three books in three years, Falling, Drowning, and Worst Case Scenario, are your classic pop, pop culture uh, manifestations of what is required in the moment. Whether it comes from uh, 30 years ago, uh, where you know film, there were loads of films about hijacking and crashing airplane 1975, airplane 1977. Those were movies, but I think they were based on books. I can't, I'm not entirely sure, but I think a lot of the flying books uh, where you got hijacks or crashes or problems um, are basically uh, novels and then turned into movies. And I guess they create a wider appeal because obviously more people watch movies than read books. 
Um, that's just a generalization. I'm just taking that from my own anecdotal experience of people around me. I mean, I'm quite serious. People around me, I think I know maybe one or two people uh, that actually read regularly, but I, I, I don't know anyone who, who um, isn't, uh, find, doesn't find reading a pleasurable uh, pastime that they wish to follow all the time. So reading is always going to be a second player to, in entertainment and for because it requires so much discipline, it requires so much time, and I can understand that people working in that. That's why I mean that's why things like TikTok and Instagram and YouTube and, and streaming services. That's why they are so popular is because they're easy access. You can turn off and come back. For some reason, you can read a book, but you know what? You can put it down and come back. But for some reason, I think it's the depth of of, of how your brain takes in the text, how the brain takes in the story. It is harder to uh, remember characters. When you pick up a book after two days, you might go, how, how did I get to this page? You've got to go back. I mean, I don't know, I don't know if people do that, but I do. I pick up a book and go, oh, yeah, no. and then I go back through four pages, Ah, now, and I get back into the storyline. Anyway, that's just me pontificating about the joys of reading. And I would highly recommend, well, I do highly recommend uh, reading them. You don't have to read them in any order. I read them in the order as they were published because that's how they came out. And uh, like I said, this one is only released in uh, August, at the end of August 2024. But what I want to say is that if you want a, uh, a place to go where you're just going to read for entertainment and for pleasure, you can't go wrong with these three great books. And I hope that you do take the time to read them. Uh, anyway, thanks for um, tuning in. Uh, what am I doing? Okay, I'm almost finished. Uh, this is the book uh, four of, uh, uh, or book five, book four, I think, what is it? of uh, the Stephen King Dark Tower series. But this one is more like a, um, it's more, it's not a part of the, it's not a part of the main volume. This book was slipped in between um, the, the stories for added information. So I'm almost finished that and I've got another uh, uh, three more to go. And uh, hopefully I'll uh, have an idea uh, about how that felt reading uh, those uh, seven or eight novels uh, of Stephen King's. All right, so thanks very much for coming in, and I hope um, you guys pick up T.J. Newman's uh, Worst Case Scenario, which is not my favourite. My favourite actually is Drowning, which is the second book. So I, I, I would highly recommend Drowning, Worst Case Scenario, and Falling. Uh, but read all three because they're all fun, they're easy to read, and you can get them anywhere. And um, thanks for coming, and I'll see you on the next episode. Bye. Wonderful to talk to you as well. Thank you so much for having me on. I really